thank you, uh, Harsh, for the invitation, and thank you, everyone, for uh, joining today. Uh, my name is Fadi Saad. I'm a co-founder of Mass Robotics and um, uh, have been pretty active in the robotics and um, AI and automation scene in Boston for the last uh, probably seven years now. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by training. Um, spent the first bulk of my career working for large companies. I used to work for Siemens and then Siemens Communication got merged with Nokia Networks, became uh, another company. And um, I uh, climbed the corporate ladder. I was one of the youngest treatment manager in the company in North Africa and Southern Europe. And uh, I was managing multi-million dollar business um, uh, contracts and projects there. After eight years, I got tired of the corporate life. My heart was really in small companies and forming and scaling companies and uh, quit my job, came to MIT, took two years off, focus uh, this time to better understand companies' dynamics, how companies form and scale. Uh, I went to an amazing program called System Design and Management at MIT, uh, joint program between Sloan and School of Engineering. Started my first company there. Um, uh, learned a lot, uh, tried to digitize lots of the thinking about uh, this idea. And then I got heavily involved into the robotic space, um, worked for uh, one of the interesting companies in the uh, local ecosystem, and then uh, founded Mass Robotics. So I'll tell you more about Mass Robotics, but um, um, I think the title of uh, my talk today is uh, Challenges and Opportunities in Warehouse Automation. And uh, I'll try to summarize some of the ob observations, experiences that I have seen and witnessed over the last probably seven years. And this is mainly from speaking with hundreds of startups, investors, and most importantly, lots of corporates. Um, uh, in mass robotics, we have more than 35 corporate partners, companies like Amazon Robotics, FedEx, Honda, Mitsubishi Electric, Analog Devices, uh, PNG and others. So uh, this gives us lots of insights about what's going on in, in the market and where is the traction in terms of robotics deployment and adoption. So the way I structure my talk uh, is very simple. I'll try to make it easy for you to follow because I know that uh, in virtual events, it's, uh, it's very easy to get distracted. I myself sometimes get distracted. Uh, but basically, I'll start speaking about challenges and opportunities from uh, the market perspective slash corporate perspective. And then the second point will be the challenges and opportunities from an investor perspective in the space and the innovators, the startups, uh, because those are very different uh, challenges and opportunities. And at the end, I'll give you a brief overview about mass robotics and what we have been doing and, and all of that. So uh, from a market and a corporate perspective, um, I think there are three key challenges that uh, we have seen evolving slowly, but uh, they become very evident now. Uh, the first one is there is a huge demand on all kind of supply chains that we have, all the uh, 3PLs, all the um, uh, industrial automation, warehouse automation companies. The demand is just off the roof. Uh, we can blame Amazon for that. Uh, they uh, they made it uh, easy for people to order and, and return, and, and uh, they did a fantastic job in, in doing that, and lots of retailers and uh, uh, supply chain and e-commerce companies followed uh, this kind of trend. Uh, but there is no doubt that there is just a phenomenal demand uh, right now, and obviously COVID just came in and multiplied that. So um, this is a key challenge that whether you are an investor, you are an entrepreneur, you are a, a, a large corporate in the space, a retailer or um, a warehouse automation company or a system integrator, um, this is, uh, there is no doubt and there is no hiding from that. This could be a challenge and frankly speaking, could be an opportunity too. Uh, but so far, uh, until we we can handle this, it's uh, I think it's a challenge that we all have. Uh, the second challenge that uh, again, from a market and a corporate perspective, is is the fact that we inherited very rigid infrastructure. 
So when you think of the warehouses that we have, the uh, logistics systems that we have, the material handling uh, systems that we have, uh, either from a construction um, kind of perspective or even from an automation perspective. I mean, most of the warehouses and material handling systems, uh, they are built using conveyor belts and uh, sorting systems and ASRS systems that very rigid. I mean, you cannot change these overnight. Uh, it involves tons of money. It involves a lot of time, a lot of downtime. Um, it's not easy to change, to adapt to uh, the first point we mentioned, which is the high demand, high variability, um, uh, high expectation in terms of delivery and, uh, and customer service. So this is the second challenge that uh, we are faced with. Uh, the third one uh, is actually lack of labor. Uh, many uh, operators now, they, they don't have enough labor to work in their sorting um, and, and delivery centers. Um, and I think COVID also just highlighted this kind of challenge between like people do not want to go back to the workforce because they are getting some support from the government or there is, there is a whole dynamics happening there. But even before COVID, uh, companies were struggling to find uh, this kind of um, labor that will do just kind of day-to-day -day, uh, tasks and even the reliable labor. You could find people, but again, the, um, uh, uh, it's a consistency of having this labor force all the time. And this is actually what pushed many uh, warehouses and logistics companies to look for logistics uh, robotic solutions. So those are the three kind of challenges that I see, the, the pressures on demands, the rigid infrastructure, and the lack of, uh, I would say, reliable and consistent labor uh, force. Uh, let's move to the opportunities. Again, we are still speaking from a market and a corporate perspective. Um, I think the opportunities is um, there is there is a growing um commitment and growing focus from innovators to solve some of the warehouses and logistics problems. So in the last five to 10 years, we have seen massive um, focus from researchers to investors to innovators uh, in terms of forming new startups that solve some of these pressing problems. So we have seen obviously Kiva uh, which was a massive success, uh, um, led to the acquisition by uh, Amazon in, back in 2012. And then uh, more recently, we have seen companies like Locus Robotics, uh, which became the leading company in um, uh, AMRs and uh, order uh, fulfillment. Uh, we have seen also companies like Six River uh, that re recently got acquired by Shopify. Um, and so forth. So we have seen um, growing companies in the space and there are more amazing companies, Waypoint, Vecna and others. Um, so this is just an example of what has been happening in the space. The second point uh, is, um, and, and this was actually enabled for uh, the first one, which is the maturity of the technology. We have seen many technologies that reach a level of maturity that enable those companies to solve some of those pressing problems, whether it's um, autonomous navigation, for example, uh, batteries technologies, because those are um, autonomous robots that cannot be connected to power lines. I mean, they need to move freely in a warehouse. So how can you have the right batteries there? How we can develop the charging stations uh, that will charge those robots quickly? Um, development in sensors, so the whole sensor suite uh, that uh, those companies develop, developments in LiDAR, the laser scanning sensors, the ultrasonic sensors, depth cameras uh, that allow those robots to see humans and uh, obstacles and kind of basically uh, make decisions how to navigate and, and maneuver these obstacles. So the maturity in the technology uh, really enabled lots of these kind of development. And it's actually an opportunity how we can leverage more and more technologies to commercialize these product, products in, and get it to market. The third piece, uh, which is actually uh, more or less an outcome of the first two, is uh, because of all of the successes that has been happening in the space, uh, companies that raised uh, 
millions of dollars at a billion dollar valuation. We saw the Berkshire Gray uh, going public through a SPAC. Uh, we saw Locust raising at a billion dollar valuation. Um, and we saw the acquisition of Fetch Robotics uh, by, by Zebra. Uh, all of these activities just raised the confidence of the investment community in investing in robotics companies for the warehousing and logistics space. So it's not a sci-fi anymore. It's not that huge risk. Still, obviously, there is a risk, uh, but uh, there has been enough validation, enough success story to say this is a this is a validated market, validated use case. The technology is there. There is enough management um, expertise out there to really tackle this um, this segment. So those are the three opportunities that I see that uh, if you are a corporate or a kind of a market player in the space, uh, you should keep in mind that there's a growing interest from startups to focus on the space, uh, the maturity of the technology, and the increased confidence uh, of the investment community in the space. Let's move to the perspective of investors and startups. Um, and I lump those together because I, I always I always like when investors and startups are aligned. Uh, they are one team at the end of the day. Uh, but in terms of the challenges that this group face, uh, four key challenges. Uh, the first one is uh, finding the vertical market expertise and the right talent. Uh, this is still not, I would say, uh, in abundance. Uh, when you think of, for example, Six River, uh, Six River was a successful company, got acquired by Shopify, but uh, I would say um, uh, one reason for the success was the fact that the founders of Six River were ex-Kiva uh, managers. So they had this experience from Kiva and they went out and built Six River. When you think of Locust Robotics, why Locust Robotics is so successful? Because the executive team, the CEO, they all come from um, uh, the, uh, the the parent company, which is quite logistics. So this is a logistics company that decided to develop their own uh, logistics product. Um, so having the vertical expertise is super important. I have seen tons of startups and I have been involved with tons of startups that they try to take a technology from... Um, a research lab or university lab and try to productize that without having anyone in the team that has this logistics warehousing expertise. And believe me, it doesn't go anywhere. They keep going in circles because they don't understand it. Even if you speak with customers, um, it's not enough. You need to have at least one or two senior people in the team that tell you this is how it works in this particular market, especially in supply chain, logistics, warehousing. So having the vertical expertise is super important. Having the right technical talent uh, is also very important. So this is the first challenge, uh, how we can uh, find those people, how we can get them more engaged into uh, innovation in the space. The second point is the tech and use case matching. Um, many times you have amazing technology, but you're trying to solve uh, the wrong application or the wrong use case. And sometimes um, you, you have a clear use case, but you cannot find the right technology for it. So I think as an investor, as a, an entrepreneur, you always need to think about that. Can I do this matchmaking between the right technology and the right use case? Uh, it's not, I mean, there's tons of use cases. There is the loading, unloading of trucks. There is the sorting uh, problem. There is the pallet movement. There is the order fulfillment. There is heavy items movement. There is uh, a light items movement. There is all sorts of use cases. So the question always is you need to narrow down what exact use case you're trying to solve. What Locust Robotics is doing is very different than uh, 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 what Waypoint is doing, for example is very different than what Berkshire Gray is doing. Uh, so those are all in the logistics space, but they are solving very different problems. Um, so the matching between the tech and the use case is very important. The third piece is the smooth integration. Uh, you could have an amazing technology, but this is, is one subsystem in the whole warehousing uh, digital system. So you need to integrate with other systems. You need to integrate with the warehouse management systems. You need to integrate with other software. 
So how you can always be able to integrate into that? We led an effort in mass robotics, which uh, I'm very proud of, which is uh, the interoperability uh, working group. And we released the first ever uh, AMR, Autonomous Mobile Robot Interoperability Standards, uh, the first ever in the industry. And uh, I give the credit for all the amazing companies that were involved. And um, this was one small step into how we can help the industry uh, deploy and integrate technologies into their existing systems. The last piece is you need to have the ROI to work, the, the return on investment, because uh, how you can kind of manage the cost and the use case. Uh, it's not just a technology. Uh, you want to develop it at the right cost, at the right price point uh, to generate a quick ROI. I mean, and people are looking at a year and a half, two years ROI. So you need this to work. It's not enough that you figure out the, the top three, but you need to figure this too. Um, I'll move quickly to the opportunities. Uh, more and more facilities for prototyping and testing. Obviously, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit biased, but Mass Robotics is a great example. Helped tons of companies to prototype, test, and deploy technology. Um, more and more uh, connections to um, customers and corporates. And uh, uh, from our network, for example, we have been helping companies to get connected with, for example, a whole to get connected with FedEx and, and, and other uh, uh, logistics and warehouse players, which is very important. Um, as I said, the successful ex exits and the growing startups in the space, uh, these are all great opportunities because it just complete the cycle and build the momentum. Uh, and the last one is the fact that uh, there are players like Mass Robotics and uh, A3, the Advanced um, uh, Automation Association, um, working on uh, standards and, and uh, related kind of um, um, uh, interoperability kind of and safety uh, standards too. Uh, the fact that the, there are these efforts is very important. So, um, so those are, from my perspective, very quickly uh, a high level kind of perspective on these um, challenges and opportunities. Um, for those of you who don't know much about mass robotics, um, we are the largest uh, robotics hub for uh, startups in the US and probably worldwide. Uh, we started back in 2014. Uh, we have uh, 40,000 square feet of shared office and lab space in the seaport, and we have been leading a cluster of 350 plus robotics companies in the East Coast. Uh, we are currently having more than 65 resident startups in our facility, uh, using all of our prototyping and machine shop and robotics platforms. We spun out five companies uh, so far and more to come. Uh, two of them got acquired recently, uh, French AI and American Robotics. And we built a massive network of corporate partners to complete the whole cycle of innovation because there is no innovation without corporates, frankly speaking. Uh, corporates play a key role to identify market opportunities, market needs. Uh, they invest, they license, they use, they buy. Uh, and ultimately they acquire companies. So this is the full cycle of uh, in innovation and company scaling and, and, and forming. Um, as I said, companies like Amazon Robotics and FedEx and Honda, GM, Mitsubishi Electric and others. And recently we just added PNG. Uh, we also have financial partners, uh, Cowan, which is a hundred year investment bank and Thomas H. Lee, uh, a multi-billion dollar uh, uh, private equity firm. Um, I am very, very grateful and very fortunate to um, to be in Boston and and, and uh, establish Mass Robotics in Boston because it's such a unique city. Uh, when you think of the uh, intellectual power uh, from top-notch universities like MIT, Harvard, UMass, Lowell, Northeastern, WPI, this is the this is the highest concentration of. Uh, uh, academic research uh, in the whole world, probably. Uh, so the amount of technology being developed in those universities is unmatched. Um, also, the fact that uh, some of the top robotics companies um, and even public companies are here in Boston, companies like uh, Boston Dynamics, companies like iRobot, companies like uh, uh, Brooks Automation um, and others. So all those companies are here. 
Um, so this actually generated um, lots of talent, lots of entrepreneurs that they basically went out and started companies and, and became part of other companies. Uh, uh, finally, just the entrepreneurial activities. I mean, the Venture Cafe, CIC, uh, uh, Techstars, Mass Challenge, uh, Greentown Labs, Lab Center. Uh, it's just an amazing ecosystem. Everyone speaks the same language uh, and everyone is very uh, collaborative. Uh, people are willing to connect and, and help each other. The amount of investment, the amount of entrepreneurial activities is just, just amazing. So um, I, I cannot imagine mass robotics to be formed in other, any other city. And, and uh, I really encourage any other corporate uh, out there who's looking to um, really um, kind of um, deep dive into supply chain, warehouse automation, uh, innovation. This is the place to be in. Um, uh, I, I don't think that uh, there's other place that can come close to the concentration of talent and activities and and, uh, and startup activities. So I'll stop here and uh, I don't know if you have a few minutes for a couple of questions. Yeah, we, we have exactly two minutes. So I'll be really, really quick. I, I have this one question for you, Fadi. So for retailers like us who operate their own distribution centers, their own warehouses and their own uh, transportation as well, what will be, if, if I ask you, like the most important thing that we should be paying attention to in terms of warehouse automation and most important thing that we should be careful about uh what will be that thing uh it's i mean it's a very loaded very tricky question obviously i wouldn't claim that i am an expert in the space or i'm mm -hmm. an expert in your um kind of um strategy kind of development but uh i i think i mean many points i i discussed in my talk are, are relevant Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, if there is one single kind of uh, tip from my side would be, um, uh, I think uh, it's all about the, the where do you plug yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is important. I think uh, I was very blessed to come to MIT and to come to Boston. Uh, if I went to another city, I think my, uh, my path would be very different. So I think um, uh, there is there is path dependency on these kind of things. Where do you start? Where do you plug yourself? Which ecosystem you get hooked with is super important. So um, I think that uh, um, it's very important to think about that. Where do you want to be plugged into? What kind of talent? What kind of experts? What kind of um, uh, clusters you want to be connected with? Uh, because this is ultimately will feed into your strategy, your innovation, what companies to invest in, what companies to acquire, uh, what kind of innovation and new products you want to have, all of that. 